Hey guys, it's Mariana, and today I'm going to be telling you about five horror comic book series that I think you should be reading right now because it is October and we're getting closer to Halloween and it's time to read something creepy. I will not be talking about The Walking Dead in this video just because it's a little bit too obvious. I mean, zombies, Halloween, if you want to read about zombies, read The Walking Dead kind of something that goes without saying, but I do have some other recommendations that I think you guys would enjoy. A bit of a disclaimer before I get into this, all five of these comic book series are classified as for mature readers. If that's something that's a factor for you, just wanted to let you know because there is language and TNA and of course graphic violence and disturbing imagery involved, so these are not for kids. Keep that in mind. Now onto the comics. The first comic book series that I want to recommend is of course Lock and Key, written by Joe Hill and illustrated by Gabriel Rodriguez. And I have talked about it on my channel before. I have a full review of the entire series because this is a series that has completed at this point. So you do have the entire story available, which is awesome because you don't have to wait for more issues like with everything else that I'm about to talk about. So I will link that, you can check it out. This is kind of a dark fantasy slash horror type of series. It revolves around the Locke family and these guys, after a tragedy happened, move into this old New England mansion called the Key House. Within this Key House, there are a lot of hidden keys that open certain doors or other things, and whoever is using the key is transformed by it in a certain way. That's kind of the best way to explain this comic book series. And if you are looking for a creepy house type of story, this is definitely your kind of comic book. Even though this sounds like more of a dark fantasy rather than horror type of comic book series, there definitely are horror elements in here and it will definitely creep you out, especially if you read this at night, which is for some reason what I did and then I couldn't sleep because there definitely is some disturbing stuff in here and some graphic violence and all of that. What I really love about Lock and Key is the amount of rich backstory and character development that happens. Everything gets slowly revealed, more so towards the end, but you definitely get the entire picture and the world that this exists in is just fascinating and all of the twists and the fantasy elements are just super, super interesting. The art fits the story perfectly, it is detailed, it is creepy when it needs to be, the color palette is perfect, generally if you're looking to start somewhere with horror comics, but you're not really sure what kind of horror you like, I think Lock and Key is a perfect place to start. The next comic book series that I want to talk about is Revival, and this is one of my more recent reads. If you follow me on Goodreads, you probably saw me reading this. This is written by Tim Seeley and illustrated by Mike Norton, and this is something that's classified as rural noir, which is not a genre I have ever seen in my entire life, but apparently it's a thing, and it is pretty freaking cool. Out of all the comic books that I'm talking about today, this one definitely has the biggest WTF factor to it because I have read three volumes so far and I still have no idea what the deal is and where is this going. Revival is set in a town in rural Wisconsin and one day the dead people in that area start coming back to life and that's known as the Revival Day. What's cool about this comic book series though is that it's not about zombies or ghouls or anything like that. These are not undead as we usually think of them, but they just kind of come back as normal people, seemingly just as they were before, and that's kind of an interesting approach. What's also cool about this comic book series is that you don't just get this supernatural story going on, but you also get the religious angle and you also get the way media treats it and you get the politics and how government reacts to this whole situation. Something that I do have to warn you about though is that there are a ton of characters here. There are a couple main characters that this is mostly focused on, but there are a lot of side characters that have names and are important to the story and 
In the beginning, you kind of have to get used to this comic book series skipping around a lot, but then you kind of get used to all these people, so it's fine, but that's just something to be aware of if you start reading this and you start getting overwhelmed. The art style here is pretty standard comic book art style, or at least what I would consider standard comic book art style. It looks good, I really like it, but then also when it gets to more graphic and disturbing images, it even makes it creepier because it's not particularly a strange and unusual art style. It kind of almost clashes, but in a good way. Like I said, I really like it. The next comic book series that I really think you should check out if you haven't already is American Vampire and this is written by Scott Snyder and illustrated by Raphael Albuquerque and I can kind of see this not being for everybody. Out of everything that I'm talking about, this one is probably the biggest candidate of being not for everybody, but I personally love it and I think it's fantastic. First of all, I love vampires and this comic book series is doing vampires right because you don't have any sparkly vampires or any kind of self-loathing and brooding boyfriends, nothing like this. This is where vampires are evil and scary and that's the way I like them. The art in American Vampire took a little bit of getting used to for me but it definitely grew on me and I love the way it captures movement and also I really like this kind of muted earthy color palette because when something does need to stand out, there's a bright red or a purple or anything like that, it definitely has an effect on you. So after getting used to it, I think this art is actually really, really cool and it fits the story really well. One of the things that I find really interesting about this series is that every volume takes place in a different decade and in a different location. For example, volume one, which by the way is co-written with Stephen King, so that's a bonus. Um, this takes place in 1920s Los Angeles. It kind of flips back a little bit to 1800s to give you a little bit of a backstory on the main character, but for the most part, 1920s LA. Then you have volume two, which takes place in 1930s Las Vegas, and then volume three takes place in 1940s during the war. So as far as I understand, this is something that continues throughout the whole series. And it's really cool to see all of these characters kind of change with the times or not change with the times. The other interesting thing is that American Vampire has a lot of different species of vampires. It's not just your generic vampire. You have really ancient vampires, then you have these European vampires that are mostly like humans, or you have vampires that are really feral, and you have shapeshifter vampires. And that's kind of where the title of American Vampire ties in, because one of the main characters, Skinner Sweet, is the beginning of this new breed of vampires from America. He is this outlaw from the Wild West, and he has this weird ability that other vampires don't have and the other people and other vampires don't really know how to deal with him. Basically what I'm saying is if you're tired of the modern boyfriend type vampires, you should really read this because this is where the good vampires are, and by good I mean terrifying. Next I want to talk about witches, and I did mention it briefly in my September wrap-up, but I do want to talk about it in a little bit more detail right now, and this is also written by Scott Snyder, like American Vampire, because I am kind of becoming a Scott Snyder fangirl, and this is illustrated by Jock, and the art is one of the main reasons that I really love this comic book series. Now, I don't normally go around recommending comics after reading just one volume because things can change, the art can change, the story direction can change, and usually you can't really judge a comic book series just on one volume because it's kind of usually just set up for everything that comes afterwards. But this particular thing is an exception because first of all, this is a complete story arc on its own and it's also just generally awesome. I fell in love with this series from the first issue back when I started reading it in issue form and 
from the first pages, I just knew this was going to be one of my favorites. Witches revolves around the Rook family, and this family moves to a new town because their daughter, Sailor, was involved in this incident that had to do with the vicious bully in school so they're kind of just looking for a fresh start particularly for sailor what they don't know is that the town that they moved to has some supernatural activity going on in the forest that's next to it and what's happening is that there are witches in this forest and when we're talking about witches we're not talking about your typical kind of fairy tale witches we're talking about scary primal creatures that pretty much will fuck you up and if you've been pledged to them you're screwed now like i mentioned i absolutely love the art style in witches it is not only genuinely creepy and beautifully drawn but it also uses these really vibrant colors which i don't normally see in comic books and it also has this really cool splatter effect and i know some people find it a bit distracting but to me, this makes the art even more unique and there are some pages that I kind of wish I could just frame because they look awesome. You absolutely need to pick this up if you want to read about some scary, scary witches. And last but definitely not least, I have to talk to you about Nailbiter and you probably remember me talking about this in my wrap-ups, but this is probably one of my favorite not probably this is definitely one of my favorite comic book series right now if not the most favorite this one is written by joshua williamson and illustrated by mike henderson and it definitely has that wtf factor that revival has not quite to the extent of revival but still there is a lot in this comic book series that i just have no idea what the hell but i am extremely intrigued nailbiter is set in this small town in oregon where a bunch of serial killers come from nobody knows why all of these serial killers come from this small town but there are a lot of them and they have very specific ways of killing their victims or very specific victims that they target and i'm not going to tell you what Nailbiter does to his victims and why. You're just gonna have to find out and I guarantee you, you're gonna be majorly creeped out by this. In the series, we have some characters that are investigating what's going on in the town and somebody who is investigating a particular disappearance and then characters that are helping this guy. But also we have Edward Warren, AKA Nailbiter, who is also a major character and he's not really investigating anything. He is just being himself and I'm not gonna lie, I am rooting for a serial killer in this comic book series, which is so weird, but you can't help loving him. If you've read this series, you understand, and if you haven't read it, you have to read it and then you will understand. There's also quite a bit of dark humor in this, which I didn't expect. And the art here, of course, is great. It is pretty earth-toned, but it does get colorful when it needs to, and it does have a bit of quirkiness to it, which goes perfectly with the tone here. Basically, I can't wait for the next volume to come out. That's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have read any of these comic book series and what did you think of them. And if you have any other awesome horror comic book recommendations, I would love to hear them because I'm always looking for more. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye!